Hey guys, Jim here and welcome back to the channel. On this week's video, we've got a really exciting one for you. We're finally going to unbox and install our Cobb access port on the 2021 Subaru WRX. If you followed up to this point, then you'll know I've been kind of tweaking this car around as much as I could on the factory tune and trying to get the best 8th mile and 60 foot times I possibly could. But the time has come where I finally want to put some more power to this vehicle. We've been dialing it in on the stock tune, but I'm just ready to do something more. Today is the day. Let's get to it. That's right, gang. We're here to put the access port stage one 93 octane tune onto the 2021 WRX today. So far, so good. This car has treated me very well, at least in its mostly stock form. Once again, super excited about how everything has kind of come together, but I do believe that it's time to give this old dog some more power. We've really dialed in our 60 foot and our zero to 60 and, and some pretty decent eighth mile times with this thing. Uh, and there's only two real ways I'm gonna get it any faster. One of them is going to be keep it relatively stock, but gut the car and really worry about like weight loss and things like that. But, you know, I use this car as a commuter. It's still, every video you see from me, I mean completely and utterly full weight. We'll go into the trunk so there's no, you know, magic there we're back here usually i keep it pretty empty although i do use it as a work truck as you might have seen on instagram or stuff like that but full weight got the spare tire once again i use this car every single day and so i think gutting it and trying to like get rid of the weight and act like this thing is a, a race car for the street i don't think that's the way i want to approach it i do want to have a nice car that i'm able to drive and able to get the family around in so the other option more power baby that's you know that's what everybody wants and i think that's the way we're going to achieve better times and a faster car at least at this point if you're familiar with subaru at all then you've probably at least heard of Cobb and at least heard of the access port and this is pretty much the basic gateway in order to unlock performance and power from your wrx or sti or pretty much any subaru you know since probably like 2002. Just in case you're not as familiar as I am with the access port, we will once again kind of do an unboxing, show you everything that you will get in the box, how it works. We're going to upload our stage one map, and then we are going to go take this thing out and see if we can do better times than we've done before. But there's also another thing I want to do before we upload the new map. Although if you watch the channel, you'll notice I do a whole lot of digs on this car and everything's usually kind of like eighth mile based. I do want to make a comparison that might be a little bit more your style than just doing eighth mile hits like I do. Other very important numbers that could benefit you is not necessarily your 60 foot or your zero to 60, unless you're launching from street lights or doing kind of, you know, street racing and things like that. It might be more beneficial for you to know what like your 30 mile an hour to 70 mile an hour times are. So before we swap everything over, we're going to go out with the draggy and basically do a baseline from second gear from 30 mile an hour up to highway speeds, which around Florida here is about 70 mile an hour. Then we will compare those numbers later on once we do our Cobb Stage 1 93 tune. But of course, we're still going to do a draggy hit. We're still going to try to set a new personal best with our 93 octane tune. It's just the way it goes. So let's see what this thing does on a stock tune from 30 mile an hour to 70 mile an hour. 30. Okay, so we are back from our baseline 30 to 70 mile an hour test. So let's just go over those numbers first and get them out of the way until we touch back once we install our access port. We clocked in from 30 to 70 mile an hour at 5.72 seconds. And the way we did that was load the car into second gear and start at a consistent 20 mile an hour before burying the pedal. And what that does is give us about 10 mile an hour in order for the car to kind of come into boost and get lively before we cross into the 30 mile an hour mark and our timer starts to tick. That also allows us to keep a little bit more consistent test for when we do this later, so we're comparing more apples to apples. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get to unboxing our access port. 
The first thing you'll notice is this thing comes in a pretty cool, sleek, all black cob access port box. Now they've been shipping these in this container for quite some time now. So I don't expect anything out of the ordinary when I open the box, but if it's your first time, na 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 na, there you go. The first thing you'll notice in the box is another box, or basically a zip up container that is going to house our access port and some of the accessories. On top of that, we also have another accessory box that will have like our data link cable and our USB cable in order to connect our access port to a computer, which we will do at a later date. Cobb's also been shipping these things out with this really cool like Cobb flight tag, which is really nice to kind of add to your keychain and whatnot. They're really cool. They're really exciting. Just something fun when you open the box. Lastly, you'll find this Cobb registration card. You'll go onto the internet and be able to register your Cobb access port. So if there is any issues, you know, in the future or anything like that, Cobb has reference of your purchase and it's just going to help everybody no matter what happens. Next, we'll open up our physical zipper bag. Here we go. Ah, so cool. So we've got kind of like an instruction manual and some other stuff. Your Cobb Stage 1 50 State Legal Carb sticker that you might want to put on the car if you're worried about, you know, breaking the law in any way, shape, or form. And then we can kind of peel back our foam and gain access to our access port. Super cool. <laughs> Next, you'll pull out some Cobb stickers. Who doesn't love stickers? That's performance, you know, on vinyl. That's super cool. Then we can pull out our phone mount, and I believe Cobb comes with like a separate, uh, what is this, kind of like a cover right there. So if you don't like the gray cover that you see on here, you can pop that off and replace that with a black cover to kind of blend in if you want to. Once we have that, we can open up our accessories box, which will consist of, our data link cable, which you're gonna need this to actually connect your Cobb access port to your vehicle. We have another USB data link cable, which once again will connect your access port to your computer. Then finally, the other half of our phone mount that Cobb provides. Now this just kind of has like a 3M backing to it. You can pull that off, stick this to the window if you want to do that. Or there is also a ton of aftermarket options for mounting your Cobb to either your dash, the windshield, all kinds of different stuff. Just as a quick reference, if you've never installed an access port before, I highly recommend checking out this Cobb Quick Start Guide. Uh, it is a quick start guide basically across the platforms for Cobb, so it doesn't just cover the Subaru. It'll have Nissan, Volkswagen, BMW, things like that. So if you need to know where your OBD2 port is, this will kind of show you a rough estimate of where you might find it for your particular vehicle. To walk you through what I expect out of my access port today, we are going to be installing the Cobb Stage 1 93 octane map onto our WRX. Then we will be comparing all of our previous numbers to our now off the shelf tune from Cobb. We have a ton of numbers already based on our factory tune, but what should I expect to get out of my Cobb off the shelf stage 193 map? That's a great question, and it might actually be harder than you think to find those numbers on the internet because Cobb doesn't actually give you physical numbers. They give you some dinographs, but they mostly deal with percentages. So if you go on the Cobb website, they'll tell you to expect between 13 and 14% increase on both power and torque numbers from 93 octane. We can get into a discussion all day of what you think these cars make all factory and what kind of dinographs you can find on the internet. The internet's a wild place, so you can find stock numbers all the way across the board from anywhere between 200 wheel horsepower and 220 wheel horsepower. After searching the internet pretty much indefinitely, I am going to go off of the base numbers of the most popular horsepower and torque I can find, which for a stock car is roughly 220 wheel horsepower and 220 foot-pounds of torque. Now once again, if your stock numbers don't exactly match those numbers, I literally don't care. We just have to start somewhere. So if the internet says 220, then 220 is where we're starting. With that being said, Cobb tells you that you should expect to see 13 or 14% increase. Based off those numbers, it would put us roughly at about 250 wheel horsepower. If we do the math, it's roughly about 30 horsepower and 30 foot-pounds of torque. So that is about what I would expect to see, maybe a little less. It is kind of warm out today. Those are the expectations. Who knows at this point what they're going to do, but it's time to get this access port installed on the car. First thing to do before flashing any car 
is hooking up a good battery tender and making sure that we have proper voltage. As you can tell, I have this very long lead hooked up to the wall, but it is making sure that our battery is charging the entire time so we don't have any ECU brick issues or anything that's going to really hurt this car while the ECU is flashing. Unfortunately, if you do have a problem and aren't smart enough to run a lead, you do run the risk of bricking the ECU, which means you will have to remove it from the vehicle and send it out to Cobb or get a new one altogether, depending on how bad the damage is. But we're not really interested in doing that, so we are going to hook up our lead, as you can see, and then we can hook the access port up to the car. Next step is to take our access port and OBD2 cable, and we will hop inside the car here, and then we will hook our cable up to the car, and then our cable up to the access port. What you're gonna be looking for is this white connector right about here under the driver's side of the dash. Then we will take our OBD2 plug and plug it in just like so. Once our OBD2 port is plugged in, we can access the other side of our data link cable. Then you will notice there is a rubber topper. Boop, we can remove that to access the pins. Then you can see there is a triangle marker on this clip, and then that will go on the front side of our access port, just like that. What's also kind of neat is they do have these two like little clips in here, so you'll actually hear it snap in, and then our access port should come alive. If it's your very first time plugging in the access port, you're gonna see this screen right here. It's simply a breakdown of what all the buttons do on your access port. We can now hit the big center button, which is the OK button. At this point, it's brought us to the install screen. If you have a buddy who has an access port and you wanna just check like your check engine lights or any other thing with the car, we can go down and do that. And if that access port isn't synced up to your vehicle, you can still use that for diagnostic. But today, we're looking to install a tune, so we're gonna go up and hit the OK button. Now the access port is asking us to verify that the key is in the on position, which we will do right now. This screen is gonna tell us to verify that the car we're installing it on is correct for our tune application, which here we're trying to confirm that the vehicle is a 2021 USDM market WRX with a manual transmission. Since it is, we're gonna hit the OK button. After a few seconds, you're gonna notice that there's a screen with a whole bunch of preloaded maps for this vehicle. Now, this part can be a little bit confusing if you're not familiar with the way Cobb works. Cobb has a bunch of off-the-shelf maps already preloaded onto this access port, and that's so if you have a stage one or if you already have the hardware installed for a stage two, you can just find all that stuff, including your 91, 93, high waistgate, low waistgate maps, all kinds of stuff that we'll go over in a little bit. But what we're looking for today in my application is going to be the stage one 93 octane map. Once we find the map that we're looking for, we will also choose okay. If you've gotten to this point, you're gonna see a warning. And what that warning says is if you have any other tunes that are loaded on this vehicle, if we hit this button again, we are gonna lose all of that information. And unfortunately, it's going to write the map that we have chosen onto the ECU. So this kind of becomes a no turning back if for some reason you didn't know the car was tuned or had an aftermarket tune on it, and then you went to put this access port on it, you better make sure this is what you wanna do. In our instance, I know the car is stock and I know that I wanna put this tune on, so I'm not really worried about not being able to turn back. With that being said, if you ever wanna uninstall this vehicle, the factory tune that is saved on the ECU will download onto our access port. So if you do wanna return the car back to stock, you can do so. I'm not worried about stock. I wanna go fast, so I'm hitting the OK button. As we previously talked about, Cobb highly recommends you have at least a 10 amp battery charger hooked up at the time of the flash. And since we've already taken care of that, we're gonna hit OK. As you can see, the tune has started. What we are gonna start with is pulling the old factory tune off the ECU and storing it onto the access port. The second half is gonna be installing our stage one map that's on the access port and replacing that stock tune on the ECU. Pretty straightforward at this point, but we don't wanna make any sudden movement. At this point, I will put the access port up on the dash so I can see it through the glass. I will close the door so that we don't have the dome light drawing any sort of amperage, and we will just wait till our process is complete. Okay, let's have a look at our progress. Oh, I see a warning. Let's check it out. 
please turn and leave the ignition in the off position to begin vehicle reinitialization. You got it, bro. Turn the vehicle off. Hit OK. We'll wait a few seconds here. Turn the vehicle ignition back to the on position. We will also hit OK. Ah, what we've been looking for. Installation successful. Please turn the key to the off position one more time. Oh yeah, we have successfully downloaded our Stage 193 map. So let's start by figuring out how to check that and make sure we loaded the right map. Before starting the car, we are going to come down to our Tune section and hit OK. We are going to go down to where it says Show Current Map and hit OK. And this is going to confirm that we have the Stage 191 map on. So, that's not what I wanted, and that's exactly why you check. So, as unfortunate as this is for me, always go back and check that you downloaded the proper map for your proper vehicle. Anyway, let's put the 93 map on. There we go. That's better. Another thing while I got you here, if you hover over the map and press and hold the OK button, it's going to bring up all of the parameters that that particular map is looking for on your vehicle. So let's read that while we're here. Intended for vehicles with stock intake system and stock exhaust, running 93 octane or greater with an ethanol level between 0 and 10%. It also tells us that our boost target is 19 PSI, give or take 1.5 pounds. Now that we know, we'll back out, hit OK to load the map, and go through that whole procedure one more time. Okay, our tender is off the vehicle, so we have put our 93 octane map onto the car, so let's head on over and start exploring some of the other options we have on the access port before we go out and drive. Now that we're back on the home screen, we're going to go all the way up and hit the help button just like that. And this is going to give you a lot of information about the access port, uh, context help, button help, demo mode, things like that. Uh, it will also, if you go up to about access port, it will give you like your firmware and all of your software updates. So if you need to know if you are the, you know, most up to date on your firmware, this will kind of tell you that so that you can reference it. Serial numbers, all that kind of stuff, it's all here in About Access Port. So we will go down to the next thing, which is our setup. Once we hit the OK button there, there's some things that we can change. We can change basically the units. If you want this thing to be in, you know, metric or imperial, if you want it to show that it's in, you know, kilometers an hour instead of mile an hour, uh, you can change things like that here. You can also reset all of the things that you've done back to a default. If you've kind of messed all of your parameters and such up in this thing, you can kind of go back and get it to act like it just did fresh out of the box. There's also an on and off setting here. So if you do leave your access port plugged in and have it into like a mount up on the dash, you can turn this to automatically turn on and off with your key. Pretty nifty. Going down even further and probably one of the more important is our gauge setup. Now there is a way that we can set up anywhere between one and six active gauging or at least active on the screen. You can set up plenty more when we do data logs for our custom tunes, but if we are trying to monitor on screen, we can set this up to monitor six different parameters all at one time. Now these parameters get very interesting depending on who you talk to or people's experience. They will tell you all kinds of different stuff to monitor while you're driving the car around. While I do believe that monitoring some of the information that the car is giving you is very important, especially when monitoring the health of your vehicle, what you're doing by driving around with all these gauges on is making this little device in your hand an anxiety box. For the most part, if the car is listed with the modifications that are on the tune, the car is going to make minor corrections so that your everyday driving is pretty unnoticeable. But if you're one of those guys who like to stare at these things, you might notice some anomalies depending on altitude, fuel quality, things like that, that can really get your heart pumping if you start staring or getting too worried about these numbers. My suggestion, if we're running a stage one off the shelf or a stage two off the shelf map and all of the modifications that are accustomed to that, once you flash the car, make sure that all the numbers are good. But after that, go ahead and disconnect this bad boy and put it in the glove box. 
that's pretty much what I do unless I'm getting to a point, which we're doing today, where I am going to actually be doing some pretty hardcore hits on the car. At that point in time, I will take it from the glove box, replug it back in, and monitor all the things I think are necessary to make sure the car is running good and running healthy. Next is going to be our performance tab, but because I have the draggy and I believe the satellite data is much more accurate than the data that's on this cob, we use that for all of our zero to 60 or quarter mile and eighth mile times. The big problem here is all of this information is based off wheel speed, mile an hour, and things like that. There can be heavy inconsistencies depending on your traction. So if the wheels start spinning, it's going to tell you you're gaining a lot more ground than you actually are. So that's why when most of the time I do performance oriented drag hits, I am always using the draggy. Next is troubleshooting. So if we ever need to pull any P code numbers or check our check engine light, we can do that pretty much at a glance. But because I just flashed this car, I don't expect to have any codes. So, you know, we're just going to keep moving. Next is our tunes, which we touched on before. Always make sure that you're on the right map with the right fueling and you can't go wrong. Finally is the uninstall, which is not at all what I'm looking to do today because I am looking to go faster. With that being said, we're going to check the car over one last time before we go to start making pulls. So I'm going to go under the hood, make sure our oil level and consistency is good, check all of our tire pressure, then we'll go out and start making some hits. Something else we should probably talk about as well. Anytime you reflash the car, clear the codes, or reset the ECU in any way, shape, or form, the car is going to enter into a relearn. And what that means is all the memorized data that once was stored in the ECU is now cleared. So the car kind of needs to figure out where it belongs. The easiest way to do that is once we fire up the car like we just did, we're going to let this thing sit for about 10 minutes and not touch it. That is going to relearn all of our idle characteristics. And then once we drive the car, we're going to drive the car for about 15 minutes before we go and rip on it. And what that is going to do is help relearn all all of our part throttles and give the car a much better chance of doing a better pull once we get there. Finally, the car is all warmed up, so we're going to take it for a spin, probably about 10 or 15 minutes, and then once I feel the car has learned enough to start making some hits, we're going to go for it. Let's talk initial thoughts. Right off the bat, I can't tell the difference. The car idles exactly the same. The tip in from the throttle position, exactly the same. In fact, if I didn't just flash this thing myself and put the access port, let's say, in the glove box, I would have literally no idea that this thing has the stage one off the shelf map on it. That kind of attention to detail, I really like because if I'm just trying to get a little bit of performance out of this vehicle, I'm not really trying to make it turn into a race car or have a hard time starting or idling or anything like that. I just want the car to perform just the way it did from the factory, but have about 30 or 40 more, you know, horsepower and torque. So far, I would consider that a win, but we got a few more miles to put on this thing before we start dogging on it. Looking good. We've been driving for about 15 minutes now, and it looks like all of our air fuel correction, tip in, everything is right on the money. Well, I guess there's no better way to test it than give it a hit, right? Let's do it. Woo! Yeah, you can definitely tell a difference. No lie. And it feels great. Man, I love this. Yeah, boy, like the mid-range picks up so good in this car now. I mean, it's almost indescribable. 
Okay, fine. Maybe it's exactly describable. It's probably describable by about 25 or 30 wheel horsepower and foot pounds of torque. And that's exactly what Cobb claims, and I will be honest with you, that's pretty much what it feels like. It truly feels like it's an OEM or stock car with 30 additional wheel horsepower. It drives great, it idles great, the tip-in is fine, decel is fine, it doesn't hunt or anything like that. It literally feels like a stock car, but with a lot more horsepower. Honestly, that's all you could really ask for an off-the-shelf map. You could really never tell this car's tuned until you're ready to step into it, you know? Like this. Yeah, man, this thing rips. Of course it rips, that's what we thought. But exactly how much rippage do we have? So let's try our 30 to 70 mile an hour test and see what we've gained. 30. 60. 60. Well, 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 folks, we have our numbers, or at least our initial 30 mile an hour to 70 mile an hour numbers. I can definitely tell you with all the confidence in the world that the car appears or seems faster on the butt dyno, but what do the numbers say? Earlier today when we had our stock tune, we did our 30 to 70 mile an hour run in 5.72 seconds. With the addition of our 93 octane stage one off the shelf map from Cobb, we did that same 30 to 70 mile an hour run in 5.15 seconds. Which, if I did my math correct, means a 0.57 second difference, which is a little over a half a second. Given the fact that we just added an off-the-shelf map using the same gas in the same conditions on the same day, over a half a second loss in time from 30 to 70, I would say is a pretty good improvement. Not only noticeable gains on the butt dyno, but on paper, I would say the access port is two thumbs up. We still haven't done our eighth mile hit. And that's because I've been driving around the car for about 30 minutes now, just kind of relearning everything with the computer to get all of our fuel trims and everything A-OK. -okay. And with just doing our 30 to 70 mile an hour run, I feel like the car is a little bit hotter than I'd like it to be. So since we're going for personal best, we're gonna pop the hood, cool this thing down for about 15 minutes, and then we're gonna go out personal best all day, aren't we? Let's go. Well, gang, if numbers is what you want, numbers is what I got. Leading up to this point, pretty much everything that we've done to the car has been either suspension based or maximizing the horsepower out of little tiny modifications just to dial the car in right. I will say that the Cobb access port is really the first thing that we've put on the car that I believe is going to add some substantial amount of horsepower. Like I had said before, Cobb loosely claims that this car should make about 30 horsepower and about 30 foot-pounds of torque on the 93 octane fuel, and it turns into good numbers. Before we can go over the numbers that we have today, we have to go over what our personal best was prior to this moment. Up until this point, the best eighth mile I was able to trap with the car was an 865 at 80.66 mile an hour. Best zero to 60 I could do in the car was a 4.93, and the personal best 60 foot I ever got was a 186. Now, full disclosure, the fastest time I've ever done with the eight mile wasn't that best 60 foot, where I think we trapped in at a 187 or a 188 60 foot for that previous best eighth mile. But that was then. This is now. Today, we were able to do a 187 60 foot. Okay, so for the 60 foot, there wasn't really any change, but I've got this dialed in between that 186 and 188 range, which I'm pretty happy with on the street. Here's where it starts to get good. Our new personal best zero to 60 was a 4.78, which is a drop about a tenth and a half over our previous personal best. So that's a thumbs up. Here's the good news. Our brand new 
personal best eighth mile is an 8.55 at 81.40 mile an hour. Boom shakalaka. Now that is what I'm talking about. The car is obviously faster now, which like I said, is kind of to be expected since we've actually done some performance modification to the car. Also full disclosure, the temperatures are starting to get pretty high today, pretty much in the higher 70s to some of the lower 80s, which is much hotter than it's been for all of our previous tests. With that being said, I do believe that I could probably best that time if we could get back into like that upper 60s or lower 70s. But with spring kind of creeping in with Florida, I only believe that these temperatures are going to get hotter and I've probably missed my window of opportunity for that really cool, crisp boost weather. But who cares about all of that? We did a new personal best today. I'm super excited about the car. I'm super excited about how this whole project is coming together and I could not be more excited. Do I keep saying excited? I'm excited. Since I've gotten that out of the way, I will tell you my two best modifications I've done to the car so far to really dial this in from a performance or eighth mile standpoint would be the Silver's Neo Max coilovers, which I've been able to dial in, and our Cobb access port. That suspension being dialed in plus that 30 extra horsepower is really giving this car something to shoot for, and it is very, very exciting behind the wheel. Couple that with the short shift kit that I got in the car, and man, this is just a regular old race car, man. I'm loving it. Thank you guys so much for sticking around for this. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for me to actually put performance parts on the car, and now we're here. You know, the power is coming. I have got a whole stack right off camera here of stuff that I want to show you guys, but I'm going to be putting it on the car pretty much one at a time so we can figure out what kind of parts actually work and what parts may or may not work, you know? So I really wanted to dial this car in from a suspension point at this moment, just so that I wouldn't have to do all this kind of wild work every time I put a performance part on. At this point, the car is super solid behind the wheel, and I think just minor tweaks every time I up the horsepower is gonna get this car right in the wheelhouse. You guys are definitely gonna wanna stick around and see what performance parts I chose for this car, and I do think that I'm gonna be putting together a pretty decent, streetable, yet good performing vehicle and I think you're going to love it. So for thousands of parts, just like everything you saw today, plus tons more, be sure to hit up importimageracing.com for all the best deals on the web and in the world. And we'll catch you on the next one. Just taking that for a drive, huh? Just taking our lawnmower for a drive? <laughs>